Hey everybody, this is Vicki Irvin. I wanted to stop in and say what's up. And I wanted to thank you for joining my training. I am super excited to be a part of Shay's Comeback Champion Summit. He is like one of the most prolific entrepreneurs that I know, always creating great content, always putting out great products, always having great speakers and just people giving you great information from all different types of industries. And so when he asked me to be a part of this, be one of the facilitators, of course I said yes, because I love what he does. And I also want to be able to give back some great information now. We are talking about comebacks, right? And as an entrepreneur, I am a firm, firm, firm believer that you are always going to have to be prepared for some type of a setback, right? Entrepreneurship is all about failures. It just is. You're like Nobody just wakes up and becomes a successful entrepreneur overnight and never hits or stumbles or has a pitfall, right? And so this is perfect because it's never too late to start over. It's never too late to scrap something, to tweak something. It's never too late. And as an entrepreneur, you always, always, always want to be armed with the knowledge and the skill sets to be able to even come back. I've seen so many people go out of business from a from a setback and they just didn't have the skill set to rebuild again. And so one of the things that I learned really early on is to arm myself with knowledge and to be prepared for anything to happen. Governmental interference, um, how about a pandemic, right? Um, <laughs> personal setbacks that knock you for a loop. In life, it's inevitable that you are going to need to, to rise again like the phoenix, right? And so the best way to do that is to arm yourself with the knowledge and the skill sets to be able to pick yourself back up again and rebuild. And I don't think enough entrepreneurs have grasped this. A lot of them get started, they make some money, they get lucky, but they aren't focusing on the things that could potentially be coming their way. We think it's always gonna be smooth sailing and that's just not how life works. And so I love what Shay is doing by bringing so many professionals together to give you great information so that you can add some tools to your arsenal and be prepared for that setback and you'll be able to come back no matter what comes your way, all right? So I'm happy to be a part of the training and to be able to, to give you some of those tools and, and, and give you some key points that I think are, are really important that you can just really take with you and start to think. My style of teaching and my style of training is, I, like, I can overwhelm you. You know, I've been doing this a really long time. I can give you a whole bunch of stuff. And so I try to sit back and remember how it was when I was learning it and, and the way that I learned. And one of the things that I think that I am really good at is um, putting myself back in those shoes of where I'm in different trainings, I don't quite understand what people are talking about or what they're saying, or I can come up with a better way to be more relatable and relate the information to people that they really need. And one of the things that I don't want to do is overwhelm, because I can, <laughs> you know, I can overwhelm you all day, but I want you to be able to walk away with my training, understanding the couple of concepts, the key concepts that I'm going to be teaching today, and actually think about yourself and your business and your brand and how you can implement these couple of key things that I'm going to actually give you. How I can kind of shift your thinking a little bit. Um, how you can start to listen to my stories and, and the information I'm giving you and see it for yourself, your brand and your business. And even if you can't get started on implementing this stuff right away, even though I would love for you to, right? You are going to have a really good understanding and a different way of thinking about your business, okay? So that's my goal for today, all right? So I am going to go ahead and share my screen so we can get started with this training. Okay. All right, so. Today, what you're going to discover is how to build a profitable brand for what? Longevity, okay? Um, that's really, really important. I see a lot of people. Now, have you ever seen, because everybody's a business person now, right? So have you ever seen entrepreneurs who are like something new every day? It's like every other week they're rebranding, they're rebranding. And that's a clue that what they're doing is not working, right? And that's because you need to build something that makes sense. It needs to be built on a foundation. The goal has to be clear. There has to be things in place to support the goal. And you want this brand to carry you for a very, very long time, all right? You don't want to be one of the people who is every other day coming up with something new that you want to be and who you want to be known as. And, you know, you don't want to get caught up in that, right? So that's what we're going to be focusing on. So some of the stuff that we're going to discuss, what a brand is and is not. Now, 
you have to have heard a million definitions of what a brand is. Everybody's a branding coach and brand me and do this and do that. So we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what a brand is and is not, how to set up a brand that you can actually monetize, which is important to me. Like I'm a, I'm a money coach. I'm a money person, right? I believe that there's no other reason to be in business except to make money. Like that's the definition of business to turn a profit. Otherwise you don't have a business, right? So I want for you to have a brand that you can actually monetize. If you're, you know, you have something you think is a brand and it's just not attracting money and opportunity to you, then you're not monetizing it. And everything in business is supposed to be set up to help you make money. Just like when you had your nine to five, when you did your job, so you get that paycheck. <laughs> I need you to do everything in your business so that you can make money. All right. We're going to talk about how to take an unpopular market position. Okay. Everybody, we're all in certain industries, right? And we all have our respective markets. And instead of doing what everybody else does, I want to talk about how to take something on, you know, become a little unpopular. Like this is not high school. In high school, we want to, I want to be popular. When it comes to branding in your business, it's okay to be a little bit unpopular. In fact, that is, you know, one of the ways that you can actually monetize your brand. And we'll talk about how to become an authority in your industry, which is just one of the positions that you can take when you're creating a brand. There's a million, there's no way I could take you through all the different types of positions that you could possibly take when creating a brand or when you're thinking about right now, um, whether your brand is working for you. So again, I want you to get in the mind frame that if you're brand new and you're trying to figure out, well, who do I wanna be in this market? How do I wanna be recognized? How do I wanna brand myself? Or whether you had a brand for a while, but you don't feel like your brand is really working for you. Like what you're trying to convey, people aren't catching on because you, let me tell you, your crowd, your people, how they respond to you, if they buy or not, the things they say to you when they meet you in person or on phone calls or whatever, that tells you if your brand is working or not, okay? And so if you've had a brand for a while and you don't think you're getting out there the message that you meant, um, and that you're attracting the wrong people, then what I'm gonna be talking about today, I want you to, Think about how you can use what I'm going to teach today to restructure your brand, retweak it, or scrap it. People relaunch all the time. Don't even worry about it, okay? So I just really want to focus on what's going to make your brand the most money. All right, so when you stay on with me to the end, and this isn't going to be a super long training, it's going to be succinct, um, and I'm just going to focus on, like I said, just a few key things so that I don't overwhelm you and that you're able to walk away and um, with some stuff that you can actually implement and really change your mindset and give you some clarity on it, because I think branding is super convoluted. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I just see a million definitions. I see people who think they have a brand. They don't have a brand. Okay, and I want to clear up some confusion. So if you stay out with me to the end, I do have a free gift. I'm going to give everyone access to my seven day business and branding boot camp, which is an amazing training that I created years ago that is still cranking. Love this training. I literally spent an entire day filming a video series on branding that I give away for free. So it's a really good solid training and I'm going to give you the URL where you can get that at the end of the presentation. All right, just for hanging out with me. I'm not selling a dang on thing today. All right. So who is Vicki Irvin? For anyone out there who does not know me, I am the owner of the Superwoman Lifestyle and coming soon, Black Woman Lifestyle. And I also own a cosmetics company, SWL Cosmetics Collection. And I've been a business consultant since 2006. I started out coaching in real estate investing. And then I did a bit of a, like I talked about, you know, rebranding. I did a bit of a rebrand a few years later um, out of just teaching real estate investing to working with other women entrepreneurs, okay, no matter what business they had, giving them the skill sets that I used in my real estate business that made that into a multi million dollar business the first year, which is not typical, not normal, you know, totally unexpected. <laughs> but I do know what helped make that business so lucrative so quickly. And so I, I wanted to take what I did in that industry and rebrand and help other women. So many women were coming out to my real estate seminars and asking like, how do you do this? My son was young at the time and they were like, you know, I, I would love to be able to do what you're doing. I was all over the radio and doing big marketing and people were hearing me all the time. And just another women were just like, I, I need help in my business too. And so I did a rebrand, okay, into Superwoman Lifestyle, which is my current brand. And so, um, I've been working with people since 2006 as a full-time entrepreneur. So I've been doing this for a hot minute, right? So I've created more than one million dollar business and brand. Um, I consider myself a consultant, a marketing expert. I'm an author. 
I'm a speaker, but I really only like to speak at my own events. I don't do a whole lot of speaking just because I don't want to, um, except for my own live events. Um, and I am now an e-commerce junkie. So with my cosmetics business, I have a full line um, makeup company for black women. I am a e-commerce junkie because that's a whole other animal, right? So I have an online business now, um, and that's what I spend most of my time doing right now. So that's where I'm at today, full time in my e-commerce business. I only work with a handful of my um, clients. Um, I scaled that back because I wanted to focus on my e-commerce business because my dream was always to have an online business where people were buying from me from all over the world who, you know, didn't necessarily know you know, they weren't buying Vicki Urban per se, they're falling in love with my products. And, you know, um, for the guys who don't know, for the women who know, you know, when you love a certain color lipstick or you know what color foundation you wear and you go to the store, or you go to Mac and say, you know, I want NC45, you know what your makeup color is, your foundation. I wanted my brand to be like that. Okay, and so that's why I'm working full time um, in my e-commerce business because I just love the idea of people falling in love with, you know, my product, um, not necessarily me. I am attached to the brand somewhat since we're talking about branding, but I always wanted something where even if people didn't know me and just read a little bit about me um, and didn't know me personally, they were falling in love with my products or services. And that's kind of how I want to write out, you know, waking up with just, you know, money just falling into your bank account every single day without you, you know, interacting with people all the time. It's just always something I wanted to do. So that's what I am up to now. And I am in the midst of another brand expansion. So this training is actually perfect for me to, to get back into all this stuff too, because um, I'm coming out with an extension of Superwoman Lifestyle brand with Black Women Lifestyle, okay? So if you follow me, you'll be hearing more about that. You can follow me on Instagram at Vicki Irvin. You can follow me on all social medias at Vicki Irvin, V-I-C-K-I-I-R-V-I-N, because you'll be seeing like that brand coming out soon. All right. So my goal for you today is to give you real life data from personal experience and successful teachings from others. I have invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in my own education to be an entrepreneur since 2006. And so I've worked with some of the top um, internet marketers belonging to mastermind groups. Um, I'm part of that old school crop of Dan Kennedy and Bill Glazier. You may or may not have ever heard of them, but they're like the godfathers. Everybody big in internet uh, marketing, um, male or female, kind of comes from that lineage, if you will, lineage of marketers, if you will. And that's where we were, that's where we learned. And so, I have a lot of stuff that I've invested in that I've learned from people who are successful. I don't teach or give information from anything that I'm just like making up theory or my opinion. I only want to be, I've always only wanted to be a, a coach or a consultant who gave you what I know has personally worked for me or successful people in my circle. Okay, so that, you know, I'm not just saying, yeah, just go try this and maybe it'll work. I don't do that. Okay, I'm giving you real life experience. And so I like to teach and, and interject with things that I've done um, that can also work for you. And I can also tell you stuff that didn't work, you know, same thing. So um, I want to give you some wins and I want to give you some ideas. And I want to have you shortcut the process and only focus on like income generating tasks as it pertains to your brand, and here's a tip, you know, beyond just your brand and other areas of business, you always want to focus the majority of your time on income generating tasks. I find through working with thousands of people through the years that, you know, when we don't know what to do, we just do things to keep ourselves in motion and we fool ourselves into thinking we're really working on our business, but we're doing things that aren't generating income. It's just busy work and we, and we lull ourselves into a false sense of security that we're actually working on our business and we're not. And so I have always focused my teachings on the income generating portions of business, okay? And so that's what we're gonna talk about today as it pertains to a brand. Because when we talk about the different definitions of branding, I don't see a whole lot of people telling people, well, what makes the brand actually work? You know what I mean? So that's the goal for you today. So let's have fun. I'm definitely deviating a little bit from my normal style. I'm cutting out a lot of stuff that I would normally do, but I'm only doing that to give you the most valuable content in this little bit of time that we've had. And I'm trying to give you stuff that you may not have ever heard of before. So I'm just gonna be laid back, have fun. I'm not selling anything, it's pure content. And I'm literally gonna give you some of the best advice um, on branding you'll probably ever get to kind of just, you know, re-engineer your thought process when it comes to your brand. So good branding gets noticed. Um, these are just some of the publications 
um, where I've written articles for, or been interviewed for, or appeared on TV, um, CNN headline news. Um, I've been Investors Business Daily, which is a straight financial um, newspaper. Um, I've been on Lifetime TV, Black Enterprise, but good branding gets noticed. And, and this is here because one of the key things about a good brand is it should attract opportunity. Your brand should make people interested in you. If you're doing things right with your brand, people are going to take notice because what are, what, is, what are the media and the news always looking to do? They're always scouring to see what's new, what's fresh, what's hot, what's news, right? Like they're looking for things that they think people are going to be interested in. And when you have a good brand, um, these are some of the opportunities that it can attract. So good branding definitely gets noticed, all right? So we're gonna switch it up. Now here, so if you were on like one of my webinars and I was selling you one of my courses or trying to get you to do something and give me some money, <laughs> right? Um, this is kind of where in my presentation I would load up on credibility slides. I would give you case studies. I would show you all this stuff that I've done over the years and everything. But because I'm not selling, I'm not following my normal format. Um, so the purpose of this training, I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that I would normally put here later on because I'm actually gonna use it in the training to show you how I use it for my brand, right? And a lot of this stuff you probably have too. You can have a lot of stuff too. This will get you thinking about what you already have in your arsenal um, that you can use to help support a brand that you're able to monetize and have for longevity as well, all right? So we're gonna kind of kind of switch it up. So the stuff that I'm gonna show you later on um, is to help support my brand. And my brand, and there's different positions you can take, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but there's different positions you can take when you decide to create your brand or rebrand or whatever you're doing right now. Um, and my particular position is I always wanted to have an expert authority celebrity type of brand, right? And so the stuff that I do um, helps support that position for me. And like I said, there's a million other positions. I could probably do a two day training on branding, right? But can't do that today. So I'll do everything based on the type of brand that I chose, all right? Just, just to simplify everything, I have something to, to talk about. So most people don't have a brand, right? Most people don't have a brand um, because they don't have a brand. They may, they may have a brand in theory, right? They did something and they said, okay, this is going to be my brand, but the brand is not working for them. Most people focus on catchy business names and taglines right? Um, you know, everybody's like, I'm going to be the this, I'm going to be the that. I remember when I did my real estate investing business that the business I told you was my first million dollar business. Um, my name was the real estate investment queen. Remember when everybody was the queen of whatever, and that was like really hot back then. I was the real estate investment queen. So that was a catchy name, right? But there were things that supported it as well. So had I just focused on, well, I'm going to call myself the real estate investment queen, and that is gonna be, you know, everybody's gonna to wanna to work with me. That in itself is not enough because that's just a name, right? And then people come up with catchy taglines. I do this, this, and this, and everyone has their elevator speeches and stuff. That's not what makes your money, okay? Color coordinating websites and business cards, all that stuff. Spending time trying to appeal to everyone. Eh, eh, okay? We're not doing that, okay? <laughs> Spending time trying to appeal to everyone. Now, I work, over the years, I have always worked with mostly women entrepreneurs. And my mentors have always been guys. Like I said, I came up with like the biggest internet marketers that are out there. I was in a mastermind with all those dudes, right? And I'm like one of the only girls. And they focus on very different things than women. Um, and one of the things that I find my clients try to do is they try to create a business that they want everyone to want their stuff. They, want, they think it's great for everyone. And I'll be like, well, who is your target market? And they go, women. Women? Do you know how many different types of women there are? when you break down the demographics, right? Black women, white women, Spanish women, um, the income level that they're making, you know, how much money they're making, their income bracket, um, their habits, what they do, what they like. You can't, you know, how old they are. You can't be so general and just say women. You can't try to appeal to everyone. And people feel so strong that they have a product or service that everyone should want and love. Everyone's gonna want and love this. No, they're not. Okay, so many people are going to hate it, <laughs> right? So it's a waste of time to try to appeal to everyone. And a lot of people are doing that with their brand. They think everyone should want it. And it's just like banging your head against the brick wall, right? And then the other thing is following what everyone else in your market is doing. 
Yeah. Now the natural inclination when you're starting a business is you get into a certain industry and you look around to see what everyone else is doing in your industry. And that's okay and that's smart and you should. That's called market research just to see what's going on. But you shouldn't be doing market research for the purpose of emulating what everyone else is doing. And that reminds me of kind of like the yellow pages and I'm dating myself a little bit here. And if you don't know what the yellow pages are, you are way younger than me. But remember the yellow pages back in the day? in the phone book and you needed a carpenter or you needed someone to come out and fix your air conditioner, you could literally just open up and just close your eyes and pick anyone because all their little square ads and those yellow pages were all the same. There was nothing to make you say, oh, I'm gonna go with this one over this one over this one. Everybody just put their stuff in there. And that's kind of what everyone does now when they're looking to um, get into an industry. They wanna do what everybody else in their market is doing. So how do you create something that stands out if all you're doing is emulating what the majority of the people in your market are doing, okay? So when you do your market research, do it for different reasons than saying, okay, this is what I should be doing too. No, see what's going on, see what everyone else is doing and then figure out what you can do, the opposite, right? All right. So a little bit about my definition of branding, because remember I said there's a million, everyone has their own ideas. First of all, nobody can wave a magic wand and brand you. Okay, nobody can say, you can't say, oh, I'm going to go work with this branding coach. And when I leave her house for that VIP day, I am going to, my phone, by the time I get home, my phone is going to be ringing. I am, my email is going to be flooded with people because I have been branded, right? It doesn't work like that, okay? Nobody can wave a magic wand and just brand you, okay? Creating a brand is not going to automatically have clients being down your door. A brand is more of a symbol of what you offer, how you offer it. What you stand for unapologetically, right, with your brand, that's going to attract the perfect prospect or lead, right? And so when people hear your name or your business name, these certain images pop up in their head and everyone should pretty much have a certain, the same idea or image of you when they hear your name or your business name, okay? So it's not enough to just come up with your position in the market, we'll talk about that, and who you wanna be. There has to be things in place to support that, okay? And again, the way you know it's working is you have to pay attention to what people say when they meet you, when they talk to you on the phone, when they send you emails. Everyone should kind of know what you stand for. And if they don't know what you stand for, you need to work on your brand. If they don't know what you stand against, you need to work on your brand, okay? So crowded markets and competition, another huge thing that comes up um, with, with people in business and entrepreneurs, most of us have a million people doing what we do right? Very rarely are we ever going to be the first one to do something. Every once in a while, somebody gets lucky and they invent something that no one else has ever done before, right? But how often does that happen where you're the only one? Doesn't happen often. Most of us have a million competitors, just like there's a million restaurants and a million hair salons and a million nail salons and a million banks, right? So we're all in crowded markets with competition, but it doesn't matter because there's billions of people in the world. And I tell my clients, you're always complaining and saying, oh, well, this is so saturated. Everyone's always doing this. And I'm like, there's a billion people in the world. If you can't find enough clients, to, to, to have a lucrative business and something's wrong. You can't service everybody in the world. One restaurant can't feed everybody in the world. One hair salon can't do everybody's hair. One nail salon can't do everybody's nails. There's plenty of people on, out there. And so when you create a brand that attracts a certain segment of the market and you focus on those people only, they, you can bring them to you and have a lucrative business. Just do the math. Whatever your price point is, multiply it times how many people you need to make the money you want. And that's all you need to have a lucrative business and you're worried about a crowded market of competition? Stop it, okay? Here's another thing to think about. If you enter a market that is crowded with a lot of competition, it's crowded with competition for a reason because there's money to be made. So it's actually a good sign. So some people say, oh, too many people. I say, oh, so many people are doing it because there's money out there. So let me go get my few people that I need to have a lucrative business too. Okay, so don't worry about crowded markets and competition and in saturation, doesn't matter. Okay, but a good brand that attracts the number of people that you need and the right people to you, that's gold, okay? All right, so messaging and positioning. What is going to identify your product and your service and what position you're gonna take in your market? Okay, what's going to identify your product or service in the position that you decide to take in your market, right? Remember I said I, I created more of a, 
authority, celebrity type of branding position, okay? And then you have to drill down even deeper than that, but that's just one. Um, what's gonna be your big message that you become known for, right? Like I said, when people hear your name, see your face, meet you in person finally, they already have an expectation of you because you've already put out there through various uh, medias and content who you are, what you stand for and what you stand against, right? And who is that gonna be? Who's gonna be receiving this message that is going to resonate with? Who precisely will your message resonate with? Because remember, it can't be all men. It can't be all women. It couldn't even be, you know, I'm, I'm creating this black woman lifestyle. I, I'm clear that my black woman lifestyle brand and the products that I'm gonna be creating for that are not going to be just for all black women. There's subsets of black women, of course, too, right? So you have to get really, really clear on who's perfect for you. And so that your messaging and your positioning attracts just those people. Maybe we're not trying to make everybody like us. We're trying to create something who our message resonates with, and that will bring the right people to you. Like who wants a bunch of people coming to them that aren't your right client, right? They're not the right person for you. You don't want to work with them. Um, they can't afford you. Like when you do this right, you kind of cut through a lot of that noise and a lot of the headaches that we get when we're attracting the wrong people. And good branding will help you cut through some of the noise, okay? So what you're for and what you're against. So I'll use, remember I said I want to interject some things that I've done before. I'll use some examples of what I'm for and what I'm against. So in my consulting business, <laughs> working with women entrepreneurs as a business coach all these years, Everybody knows you come to me, you come to Vicki when you want to buckle down and learn income generating skills for your business. My goal for women entrepreneurs, which is my market, um, and of course, it's not just women entrepreneurs, there's a million of those. They have to be at a certain level of place in their business or mindset to be my perfect client. So I only want to teach you and work with you on arming yourself with skill sets where you can literally wake up every day, go into your office and strategically do very specific things that you know are gonna generate income in your business. Um, I don't want you waking up every day doing what I call hope marketing, which is hoping you get a new client. Maybe somebody got you a referral, not knowing where your next client's gonna go from, come from. I literally am all about income generating skill sets, which for a lot of women are scary. And it's more, technical stuff that you have to really buckle down and learn, you know, how to write copy, you know, a, a, a multi-million dollar skill set if you know how to do that. Uh, imagine being able to write an email and every time you write an email and, and want someone to buy something, they do because your email is written so well that it leads them to the conclusion that they need to buy it. That's a skill set, okay? I'm not talking about, you know, a nice grammatically written email. I'm talking about the art skill of writing copy, right? And that takes time to learn and that takes practice and, and people don't always want to do that. So if you want to learn income generating skills, everyone knows that if you're looking for a coach who's going to make you do things that make you uncomfortable because a lot of women shy away from more technical stuff and Facebook advertising. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Ah. I'm not your girl, right? And everyone knows that I'm actually against purpose and passion. Okay, let me explain. <laughs> okay, so for me, in my superwoman lifestyle brand, I realized through working with women, and initially when women were coming to me, they were at all different points in their business, you know, wanting to start something, just starting out, midway, seasoned already. And I started seeing a pattern that so many women are focused on purpose and passion, feel good talk, right? Um, if you were to Google purpose and passion right now, you would see a million events, seminars, everything talking about purpose and passion, motivational stuff. That's not me. There's a million people teaching purpose and passion. Oh, if you just find your, you know, your purpose in life and you'll become passionate about it and then you'll just profit. That profit's not coming. <laughs> okay. If you just feel good about what you're doing, there's a lot of people who have purpose in life and they have a lot of passion about some things that they're doing, but that doesn't mean those things are profitable. Okay. And so it was lulling women into a false sense of security that as long as they were working on something they really felt good about, and they, you know, it made them feel good, that the money would just follow by itself, just follow on its own. And that to me is woo woo, wishful thinking, not gonna happen talk. But it's easy, it's a softer skill, it's just talking and trying to get people to hold hands and come on and you can do it. And if you close, close your eyes and hold hands, I'm not for that, right? Now, I'm not saying that 
getting a pick me up and a motivational message and, 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 and getting rejuvenated with, you know, getting pumped up isn't needed because it is. But when you're trying to run a profitable business, purpose and passion is not all you need to turn a profit. <laughs> okay, you have to learn some skill sets, right? And so when we talk about what you're for and what you're against, I created a brand with Superwoman Lifestyle where I made it clear that I don't like all this purpose and passion talk because you guys are wasting time and money and just years and years and years and you're not making any money, but you still keep going to all these motivational events and you're not making a dime, right? And so people started to know you're only going to come to my annual event, my Extreme Women Entrepreneurs event, which I've been given year after year after year for, for I don't know, forever, a three-day event that I do. Anyone coming to my event is coming to learn some income generating skill sets. They know I'm not going to do the purpose and passion stuff. They know I'm not going to be speaking like a preacher from the stage, trying to motivate them into something or trying to motivate some money to fall into their pockets. I'm not doing that. Okay. And so that's what I became for. So more purpose and passion people, do they get mad at me? Yeah. But remember I said, that helps make me money. <laughs> okay. So I don't mind. So people know I am for income generating skills. And if you're not ready and you don't want to buckle down and you do copywriting and the Facebook advertising and all that stuff and going back there and your ads manager and business manager and custom audiences and all that stuff scares you, don't come to me. And there's a lot of women who will never come to me because they're not ready to go there. But the ones who want that, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go work with Vicki Irving, right? And how do I know that that worked? Because when I give my events, and women stand up and they ask questions and they want to talk to me and they'll start to talk and they'll say something about purpose or passion. They'll go, oh my God, I'm so sorry, Vicky. I can't believe I said that. I know you don't like purpose or passion. And I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. But that happens so often that I know my brand is working. They're actually apologizing to me for even uttering the words purpose or passion because they know that I am against it. Okay. That's a brand that is clear and is working for you. All right. And so I want you to start thinking like right now, just take a minute and say, what, what do I stand for? Like, what do I stand for? Like when people come to work with me or buy my product or service, why are they buying it? Because they know X, Y, Z, oh, X, Y, Z, right? And, and, and if you get that and you hear feedback and people are saying things that, you know, that you have put out there and you're trying to convey and people are regurgitating that back to you because our audience and our, and the market is the best indicator if our brand is working or not then you have something that's working for you. But if people are kind of confused and all over the place and they don't see a reason why and they don't really know who you are and you're having to re-explain things all the time, it's not working and we need to work on it, which is fine, right? That's what this is for. And this is how you monetize the brand, okay? So what will you stand for? What will people know you for that you stand for, right? And what do you stand against that people are like, oh, he, she, they, they don't play that. They don't do that. They don't do none of that. Right. And I would get, and I would get women who would come and say, you know, they'll say, you know, I finally got the nerve to come to your event. Maybe I'm too hardcore, right? I got the nerve to come to my event. Like they had to get up their nerves. <laughs> oh, um, they say, I finally got the nerve to come to your event because you're right. You know, as I'm marketing my event, I send out the email marketing or whatever, and they're getting these messages before they even decide to come to my event. And, th and I've heard it over and over because I'm huge on receiving feedback because that's how we know what's working in our business is not. I can't say that enough. Listen to what people say to you um, by email email in person or whatever. And they would say, you sent an email, Vicki, that talked about how, you know, you keep going to these purpose and passion events and you're still not profiting and money's not going to fall out the sky. You have got to learn X, Y, Z, blah, blah. And they're like, you're right. I've spent thousands of dollars on purpose and passion seminars and I'm in the same place and it's been five years and I'm on the brink of giving up, but you're right. That's not going to cut it. I need to learn how to write copy. I need to learn this. I need to learn that. And that's how you know that your brand is working. So I'm not worried about trying to get purpose and passion people to come work with because I don't want to work with them. If you don't want to buckle down and learn these things, it's not always easy. I couldn't stand it. I, I, I mean, like I had to have my head beat in too to learn a lot of this stuff because I don't like a lot of the minutia, right? But once you got it, you got it. And you're able to wake up every day and know how to do things strategically to make money. You're not relying on paying other people. Um, you know, you can do this stuff for yourself. And so that's how you know that your brand is working. So start thinking about what you're for and what you're against, okay? So don't be afraid to tick people off, right? Like a lot of purpose and passion people are mad at me. And again, I make it clear that I think it's okay to 
go to a motion, motivational event, but any business coach just telling somebody that all they need to do is find their purpose and passion, the money's automatically going to come to them. That's like some witchcraft stuff to me. That's not true. I don't play that. I'm totally against that. And I'm fine with that position. Okay. So don't be afraid to take people off. It will make you money and make your brand so crystal clear. And it'll also, like I said, it'll weed out the people who don't want that. Why do you want to waste your time on calls or strategy calls or talking to people who you're not going to be a fit for and clients you're not going to want to work with, right? So it's impossible for everyone to like you. So getting clear on what you're for and what you're against is important because your brand, no matter how great you are, is never going to appeal to everyone. Everyone is not going to want your stuff. Everyone is not going to like you. They're not going to like your park or service. They're not going to like how you look, whatever, right? It's not high school. We don't care. Don't be afraid to take people off, okay? So think about who can I take on? What, what position can I take? What don't I stand for in my industry? If you can think right now about what everyone in your industry is doing that just irks you, like, oh, I don't know why everybody in my industry does that. It doesn't even work. Or it's, it's a false sense of security. Or that's not even true. And all these people are out there learning this stuff. And it's not even true. Think about what that is and then go against it. Because you're going to stand out because you're going against what everyone else in your industry is doing. Okay? So it solidifies your position. It makes it crystal clear so you're only attracting the right people. People, okay. Um, when my real estate investing brand, when I first started teaching real estate investing, and I told you I called myself the real estate investment queen, and that whole branding thing, that that literally ticked off all the real estate investors in my area. And I'm in the Washington, D.C. area, and they were like mad. They were like writing blog posts. They wouldn't mention my name. You know, they wouldn't at me, as we say today. Right? They wouldn't mention my name because I was on their list, but they would be talking about me. They're like, oh, we, we, you want to come and learn real estate investing because we're not going to be, one of them said, we're not going to be crowning any queens at my real estate investing seminar. I was like, oh, I never talked about crowning myself a queen, <laughs> but you know, I just created something um, and taught my stuff and marketed a different way and, and, and did something that was really going to stand out. And all the other real estate investors seeing all these people flocking to my seminars and, and they've been doing it for years and I was super new on the scene and they were like oh, the nerve of her and calling herself the queen. So they were like typing away, writing against me. Right. But I took people off and everybody wanted to keep, come see the real estate investing queen um, teach real estate versus them in their little boring real estate um, <laughs> seminars. And guess what? We're teaching the same thing. There's only a few ways to invest in real estate. I didn't have some magical way that nobody else knows about. All real estate investors teach the few methods of real estate investing that are out there. It's just mine sounded better. Boop, boop. <laughs> right? So that's that positioning and ticking people off can actually bring you money. So that's just another example I wanted to insert. It's also how Trump won. Okay, so um, <laughs> Trump, you know, is a great example of what not to do, what, what, who not to be, in my opinion. I don't care what your political views are. I do not like Donald Trump, okay? So, but I can take some lessons for how Trump won because the one thing this guy is good at is, is, is designing a message and knowing who to go after with that message, whether he believes in it or not, um, and saying what he needs to say to win. And all the things I talked about, that positioning and doing things that tick people off are how he won his first term, right? He focused on a specific segment of the market and he designed a message that would excite them, right? He did this whole grievance thing. Um, he divided his take back our country, take back our nation, because he knew a lot of people felt the same way that he did. And like, who has ever done that before? Who would ever come out with what I consider um, racist messages, racist messages that don't include um, all of America? I mean, like, this is the United States, like, it's 2020. Who would do that, right? Donald Trump. And who would think that that would ever work? Nobody thought that would work. Look what all of his people who are now supporters, like all the people in Congress and senators who now support him, when they were running against him, look at the things that they said about him. They said everything that, you know, a lot of people say about him. Then, right? And they were like, this man is never going to win like this. This is America, it's 2020. No, Trump saw something and he was tuned in to a, to a certain segment that were enough of them to pull them together to, in a cult-like fashion to blow through all these career politicians not knowing a thing and it worked because he found a unique position in the market and he only focused his little narrow message on a small segment of the population, which at the time was enough for him to win. Okay. So that is the one thing that he's good at. You know, that's how he kind of did his whole career. If you watch him, I always try to take lessons from everything put before me, whether I like the person, whether I like what they're doing or not. When I see someone succeeding and it makes everyone go, well, how did they do that? 
I look at the business lessons from it because, you know, I've been a business and a marketer my whole life. I've been in business um, as a career my whole life. And so I'm always looking through things with the lens of um, marketing head on, you know, regardless if I like the person, their politics or not, I take lessons from it. I'm like, gosh, he's, he's, he's a master at branding and message. That's why he repeats the same stuff over and over and over again. And we're like, why doesn't he just stop lying? Because he knows if he repeats these things over and over, that certain segment of the market are going to believe what he says, no matter what. They don't care if it's right in front of them that it is a lie. He knows. He knows. He's not just doing it. You know, he's doing it on purpose. And so some concepts of branding um, that I teach that can help you have a lucrative brand, um, using it for good and not evil, though, um, <laughs> are exactly how um, Trump won. So um, love him or hate him. I don't know what your politics are. Don't care. I'm just telling you, learning what I'm teaching you today, you can kind of say, you know what? What she's saying, you know, about the branding and stuff and defining the small segment of people, just the right amount of people. Remember, he wasn't trying to appeal to everybody. Remember, I said a lot of entrepreneurs, especially women, want everybody to want their product or service and want everybody to like them. Trump did it opposite. He said, just a certain segment of this market who is going to love this message. It's not going to be everyone. It's not going to be, you know, majority, but it's going to be enough to carry me over the finish line. And I don't care who this makes mad. I'm going just with this. And that's all I need. And he didn't care about anybody else, right? So that's just another example of how that works, okay? So you want a brand that commands top dollar, okay? Um, you should be able to monetize your brand for its pointless, okay? The goal is to be profitable. So when you create something for longevity, you want a brand that commands top dollar. See, people enter the market with different positions. Some people say, oh, you know, I'm going to be the cheapest because then when everyone sees how much everyone else is charging, they're going to run to me. No. <laughs> then you can be the middle of the road or you can be top dollar. I go for top dollar position. It's the best position in business to ever have. Um, people have different reasons for, for doing otherwise. I teach all of my clients to go for top dollar as long as I believe they have a product or service that can command top dollar and they're willing to put in the work to um, support that, you know, to support the brand commanding top dollar. Okay. So Certain things have to be in place to make that happen. Have you ever heard people say, or you know, coaches and people say, you know, raise your raise your rates and raise your prices and charge your worth, right? And you're like, yeah, I'm gonna raise my prices and charge my worth. But it's easier said than done. And a lot of people are super, listen, people are petrified. I've listen, I've worked with thousands of people. One thing people are petrified of entrepreneurs is raising their rates. They think as soon as they raise their rates, everyone is going to run for the hills. I've worked with salon owners, hairstylists. They all think as soon as they, oh my God, my clients, they're going to stop coming. I'm like, no, they're not. No, they're not. I've worked with a lot of hair salon owners, actually. If you think about it, especially the ladies, sorry guys, but even guys with the barbers, okay? When you like your barber and he's giving you that fresh um, lineup or got your waves, you know, getting us all seasick, <laughs> whatever it is, you really like that barber because, you know, he got you looking right and you go out, the ladies are looking at you and stuff, right? You're not going to go let Joe Schmo cut your hair. Even if your barber were to raise his rates, you might not like it, but that rate, that hike he does five or $10 on you is not going to let you go um, to somebody else. And ladies, when you love your hairstylist, and you know that we have a very special bond with our hairstylist, right? So when she raises her rates, you're not going anywhere. You're not, okay? People have to raise their rates sometimes, you know? Products, the, the, the cost of products go up and, you know, you know, you got to raise the price on your services. Everything is, um, you know, relative. So everyone wants to charge more and command top dollar, but they don't know how, or they don't feel like they can and actually get it, and it petrifies people. And a lot of times the reason why you're scared is because you don't, you really don't have a brand that you feel can justify charging that amount of money, right? And that is why I say certain things have to be in place. So when you hear people telling you to raise your rates or whatever, if they're not telling you how to, how to do it in a way that it'll actually work, then you know that, that's a little remiss to me. That's being a little remiss because things have to be in place to justify raising the rates a lot of times, okay? Um, so positioning, your position in the market. So when our prospects come in and we start providing them value and we're educating them, right? Where they're, they're coming to us, they're just prospects at this point. They're not, you know, they're leads, they're not clients yet, but we want to provide them value and educate them. And as you're educating people, they start to view you as an expert, right? They start to see, oh, they're an authority, an expert. It just gets planted, kind of gets planted in their head. And positioning and educating people and having people view you as an expert is one of the main reasons that I make all my clients write books, right? Like I know people love writing books, like being an author, 
is a big deal to a lot of people, um, probably for different reasons, right? So people get so excited about their book. So when I want my clients to write a book, I'm like, listen, this is not a vanity project. I want you, I'm not trying to get you to be a New York Times bestseller, right? I don't care about the Amazon bestseller list. I'm not big into that. Some people are, and I think it's, you know, it's a great thing to do too. But as an entrepreneur, and if you're a coach or consultant, you're selling a product or service, your book should support you selling more of your stuff, whatever your stuff is. And so when I have my clients create books, it has to be another selling tool that gives them credibility and authority because, you know, when people see your book, you're like, you're an author. And that is like credibility in their mind. So I want the book to be another tool and it helps you position, helps your position in the market and it helps support your brand. And in turn, that helps you command top dollar. Oh, he or she has a book. They must be, you know, somebody. It helps support the, 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 your price point, which I want you, for you to be high, okay? So when I said there's various positions you can take when establishing a brand, it doesn't have to be celebrity authority expert, which is my position. And again, there's a lot of positions you can decide to take. I could go through several, but I, I just can't today, right? So I'm gonna just stick with the one that I chose for again, for example purposes. Um, and celebrity authority or expert position is a good one that you can take in the market. Again, there's different ones, but this is particular position is a good one um, because it really, really works, all right? So I'll take you through the process of some of the things that I've done. Um, I have, I, so this is where I told you earlier that normally if I was selling you something and you were all on my webinars and I wanted you to buy something, I would be giving you like case studies and look at this and ooh, look at me and look what I've done, right? <laughs> but I've taken all of that and I put it here because I wanna show you how um, I use that stuff to help support my content, to help me support my brand, okay? So these are just some of the things I'm gonna show you that help me support being able to charge top dollar in my coaching business, right? Because my, my coaching fees are high. If you work in my mastermind programs, I have levels of up to $60,000, um, just different stuff. But I have to, you ha it has to be supported, right? So I have a range, but I'm definitely a high-end coach. Um, but these things that I'm getting ready to show you alone are not gonna be enough. But there's some of the things that are strong that help me in support of my brand. So this is Stedman Graham, Oprah's boyfriend at one of my events. Okay, you see my chair, my picture back there, he's speaking in front of my audience. So what is, how does Stedman Graham help me? So Stedman's Oprah's boyfriend, yes, but it's the attachment to Oprah, right? So if I have an authority expert celebrity type brand, and Stedman Graham, which most people in my market will have never been able to see Stedman anywhere else, but you know, you know, at my event, some of my some of my students um, who also are coaches um, have gone on to you know, we, I give them some of the same speakers or introduce them or they use some of the same speakers with me. But I know that as a black woman entrepreneur, I was probably maybe maybe like the first one to have Stephen Graham speak at an entrepreneur event where the audience is black and women amongst my colleagues and stuff like that. Stephen is more of a Fortune 500 type speaker um, for companies and stuff. But I, use, I like Stephen because Stephen and I actually teach, what he speaks about and what he teaches, um, branding and positioning and some other things are in line with what I do too. So we were a good match. We, we vibe on some certain levels, but there's also the attachment to Oprah, right? Like Stedman's getting this work because of the attachment to Oprah. Brilliant man, successful way before Oprah, makes his own millions. Don't believe the hype when you hear the jokes, you know what I mean? This was already a successful businessman, very, very smart, but it's still the attachment to Oprah Winfrey. So if you come to my event, oh my God, Vicky has Stedman and Stedman's on stage and he's talking about it. Oh yeah, when Vicky and I talk and he's talking like we're friends, that helps my brand. That boosts my brand, this whole attachment to Oprah. He talks about Oprah, which he never does anywhere else, but he got excited because he's not used to speaking at events like mine full of black women. And he started telling us how Oprah thinks. He wouldn't normally do that because he doesn't mention her out of respect. You know, they're very private. And when you pay him or, or, you, or, or Fortune 500 companies paying him to speak, he sticks to the topic and he doesn't involve her, but he kind of unbuttoned a little bit. You see his suit jacket open. He was excited. Look at the shirt all unbuttoned. I'm, what is Stedman doing there? Got the shirt all the way open. I'm just noticing that. But he got loose because he was excited. He told me, I can't believe you have all these black women coming out here to see you speak. And so he gave us some stuff about how she makes decisions with the left and the right of her brain and just instant celebrity attachment for me. Like, wow, thank you, Stedman, I'm super cool. So that's how I use that. I'm um, here, Stedman, at my after, my um, my networking party at my event. That's Jennifer Williams. She came to my event one year. Um, but that's Stedman, you know, there's my brand over my head, Superwoman Lifestyle. You see my last name, Irvin, up there. But again, you know, the pictures, the video of Stedman, this is all helps um, support my high-end brand, right? 
That's how I use that. This is me and Stedman working on um, a nine, talking about his nine step success plan. Vicky and Stedman, see the attachment? Like, I get as much as I can out of it. <laughs> you know, he wrote me a testimonial. Part of it is Vicky Irvin is one bad sister. You know, Seven Graham being, you know, Oprah's lifelong partner, like she's like the baddest like black woman out there. But here's her boyfriend saying that I'm one bad sister. How do you think I use that in my brand? Everywhere I can. Okay, so I'm trying to show you how this works. Um, another time we worked together because he spoke at my event more than once. We've worked together more than once. He called me um, out the blue just to see what I'm working on and tell me what he's launching and working on. So we're cool, right? I'm cool. I ain't getting no invite to see Oprah yet. I mean, it's and cool, <laughs> okay? But this is how I use that, right? That's how I use that in my business. This is me speaking at an event. Um, with Susie Orman, okay? So Susie's listed and billed as a speaker and so am I. So we're speakers together um, on the same, you know, same card, like same fight card, Vicky and Susie Orman, that's pretty good weight there. Um, this is me with Barbara Corcoran of um, Shark Tank. Again, we were both speakers at the same event. So you see my name as a speaker, you see Barbara Corcoran. So I get my pictures with them, I use them everywhere because again, you know, people know you share the stage with these people, it elevates your status as well. You know, and you guys have stuff that you've probably been to events or done stuff with people that you need to probably milk and use the way that I do, <laughs> okay? That's what it's for. This helps boost your brand and support it with content. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, this is Renee Lawson. If you were a fan of the Haves and the Have Nots, one of Tyler Perry's long running series. She and I um, were celebrity hosts for an event together. Um, she's on TV, on OWN Network, works for Tyler Perry. She's the host and I'm the host. So I'm elevated with another celebrity, right? Um, same thing with um, Fonsworth Bentley. He and I were co-hosts for another event here. Um, he's a celebrity, you know, just the same, the same billing, the same level. You use all of this stuff in your marketing to help your brand. That's my point. Um, this is me on covers of some magazines that I've done. You use this stuff everywhere in your presentations. You blow them up at your events. Um, you show them in your slides. You use this stuff, right? Um, this is the one that I just did um, last month, actually, this year, 2020, just did this one for Wopreneur Magazine. Um, this is this story was done on my, my cosmetic line, which was super cool. You use this stuff. Um, this is me and my girl, Shantae Moore, R&B singer, Shantae Moore. Shantae's got a man at home. <laughs> so that's my girl, right? Shantae's my girl. When I launched my cosmetic company back in 2013, I got Shantae to help me launch and kind of be the celebrity face of my brand. Once again, different business, has nothing to do with superwoman lifestyle per se, right? But I'm still following the same model of attaching to other celebrities to lend credibility to what I'm doing and to help boost my brand, even in the makeup business, okay? So people are like, you know, instead of like, who's this, what's SWL collection? That's not Revlon, that's not MAC. Or, oh, Shantae Moore is a part of it. It just... You, you, it helps you cut through the, the trust and the credibility issues that we have when it's just us and we're just regular schmegulars, okay? So I'm just showing you how I use a different business. Me and Shantae on the cover of Fitness Fit Figures magazine together, right? So, oh, wow, Vicky did a cover, a fitness cover um, with Shantae Moore. I, be, I don't even remember when this was. This was a few years ago. I don't care how old it is. I could be 80. I'll still be using this cover, okay? Because I use my stuff. <laughs> this is just some of the content I'm showing you today. So me and Shantae again. This is me and Shantae in Nigeria. Um, she was booked to do some events over there. I went to do some PR stuff with her. Um, that's her in the tan dress. Um, oh, that was such a good trip, but that is for another day. Okay, I could do a whole thing on what we did in Nigeria. <laughs> But again, having these type of pictures, international, you know, going international with, you know, Shantae Moore, all expenses paid trip, people brought us out there, just stuff that you use in your business. Um, this is Robin Dixon of Real Housewives of Potomac, again, using the celebrity attachment another way. Um, Robin and I work together doing several things right now. Um, she created, I had her, I asked her to create a line through my SWL, you know, like a celebrity collaboration. And we've been doing this now since 2017. And so um, these are my pictures. I own everything. Robin does photo shoots for me. We do Facebook traffic. We do products together. And that helps my cosmetic company. Had Shantae with the cosmetic company, got Robin. It's giving me credibility and helping me sell way more than I would if it was just another cosmetic company out there, right? So I use all this stuff. Um, this is me and uh, Robin and I do live events, you know. Um, since we've had the collab together, her line only drops a couple times a year. Sometimes we create new products. Um, but she does live events and, you know, we fill the place with people coming out to see and buy Robin's products, right? So we have a business deal together. <clears throat> so 
that's how we do that. This is Robin on the right at my event. Um, she spoke at my event before, my Extreme Women Entrepreneurs event. I helped her put on her first two women's events. I spoke on her panel. This is me, her, and Giselle from Housewives at one of our events um, that we had that was like full to capacity. Um, Giselle is super supportive as well. Just, just using all this stuff. And again, Robin and I work on other stuff with um, Facebook traffic. I do some of the traffic for her own business that she has right now. I help her with the traffic there. We're working on some other products together um, in a whole nother area. Just keeping those uh, relationships going. This is, I look really nuts in this picture. I hate this picture. But um, there was an Innovators and Influencers Award that came to the Washington DC area. And I was called down to be one of the recipients of the award for being an innovator and influencer in my, my area, the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, along with like Raheem Devine. Um, I forgot who else was on there. Um, oh, Angela Rye was one of the, um, I love her, Angela Rye, who's like one of our black women, like out there fighting for our politics and everything. Um, she was one of the recipients. So you're like with these people, Angela Rye, Raheem Devine, she's on TV, Raheem's a celebrity, I'm not. But guess who's right there with them? <laughs> okay, so I've learned how to do this, how to use this stuff. And when the Innovators and Influencers Award came around, you gotta think about that. So let's think about how the brand is working, right? The brand is working because if somebody's putting on a whole event and recognizing innovators and influencers in the Washington DC area, and they think of Angela Rye and Raheem Devon and Vicki Irvin in the same vein, that's the brand working again. I didn't know they were having this. I don't even know who they, I didn't even know who they were. They contacted me. So you see how that works? And so that's when I say I want people, I want the brand to attract opportunity and for people to think of you as a certain way, right? So again, we pay attention to like, why did they call me? Along with Raheem Devon and the other people with it, you know what I mean? But that's when the brand is working and your stuff is out there in the right way to help support you charging top dollar. That's my whole point of this. So everything you see me doing is always from a, business standpoint. I'm business 24 seven. Um, I did the BET. I hosted the BET honors um, and, and interviewed the honorees. That's Ice Cube and his wife giving me the side, side eye. But <laughs> I always say that. But I did red carpet interviews. And I interviewed all the recipients um, that year along with major um, news channels, right? Again, opportunity. Somebody asked me to do this. Why am I there with the Washington Post and all these publications doing interviews? Why, did, why was I chosen to do this, right? It's the brand again. Oh, let's get Vicki Irvin to do interviews. Right there doing them, <laughs> okay? And, and snapping these pictures. I brought my own camera crew down there. Um, we talk about, you know, getting the content together and, and, and making sure you capture everything for your business. You know, I, I don't never get caught up in what I'm doing to the point that I'm like, how can I use this in my business? And so I had my own camera crew down there as well. Um, so that's just me zipping through some of the stuff that I use to help support, support that expert, elevation brand that allows me to charge more, okay? So let's talk about something we do called pre-framing to charge your worth, okay? Um, how do you successfully charge your worth, right? We talked about that, and that's just some of the stuff that I was doing, just some of it that I do to help me be able to charge top dollar. But you have to engage in marketing um, to direct other people's opinions about you before they even interact with you. See, a lot of those opportunities came to me without these people even knowing me or interacting with me, but they saw stuff out about me that led them to a conclusion about who I am. So some of the ways that you can do that, videos, articles, using someone else's audience, getting on their podcast, being interviewed, whatever, your own podcast, um, writing for publications um, of notoriety like Entrepreneur Magazine, um, writing for different magazines in your arena, all of that stuff is content that you can use to help pre-frame people before they even meet you about who you are. So it helps solidify your brand. It helps people view your brand a certain way and they haven't even met you, right? So people see all this content, content about you and the seeds are already planted. They're already um, coming to favorable conclusions about you and who you are in your business. They're already seeing you in a certain light and that's like your stuff working for you in advance of them even meeting you. So pre-framing when it comes to your brand is important, okay? And that's one of the ways that you successfully charge your worth. You have to have content out there that people are seeing and engaging in and viewing about you before they even meet you. And that is huge. It sounds like a small thing, but it's huge and nobody's really pumping out content anymore. 
Um, so then there's pre-frame to indoctrination. And indoctrination is when someone opts into your website. You know how you want people, you want to build your list and people to opt into your website? It's kind of when someone makes the decision to opt into your website, okay? They've been indoctrinated at that point. They're, they're taking the leap, right? And, or they're performing some other favorable call to action that you want them to do. They've been indoctrinated, right? So pre-framing and seeing all the content out there about you helps them to form some conclusions about you or getting familiar with you. They're starting to go, oh, Oh, look at her, he or she's there, and they're there, and they're there, and they're already starting to say, oh, look at her with this person and that person. So they're being pre-framed, right? And now they've been pre-framed enough that they see something you have and you want them to opt in. They're like, you know what? I'm going to opt in because they've already seen this other content about you, and now they want more of you, right? So here's a real-life example of how it works. Um, I was speaking, I, I got to speak at one of my mentors events, James Malinchuk. Um, you may or may not know James, he's known as the big, big money speaker, but James hands down has one of the best live events um, ever. Okay, one of the best live events ever. Huge, huge, huge following in the market um, of people who are also in my market as well, because we do a lot of the same stuff. So he's just been, he does events two times a year. I think he's doing four times a year, but people come from all over to fill his events dynamic events. His events are so good that the same people keep going back over and over and over again. Exact same event. So good you keep going back. So much content you can never get it all in one thing, right? So James is known for having celebrity speakers. Really the only people who speak on his stage are always celebrities. Whether they're A, B, C, D, E, D, Z list celebrities, they're, they've been, they've done something and people recognize the name because they're celebrities. That's kind of his thing. He's a celebrity, celebrity person too. Um, and one time he asked me, to speak at his event. I was like, oh snap, because <laughs> I know he only has celebrities. I didn't even think about it. Um, so he asked me to speak at his event. And what he did was he promoted my appearance, of course, in all his marketing. He's a prolific marketer as well. He promoted my appearance in advance, of course, along with the other celebrity speakers. And people who know that he only works with celebrities, you know, of course, what does that do? That pre-frames them like, oh, who's Vicki Irvin? Like, wow, James has this, this woman named Vicki Irvin speaking on a stage. She must be somebody too, because he only has celebrities on there. Who is she? So he, that positioning and that marketing was kind of the pre-frame for me speaking at his event. It gave me instant credibility. It made the audience receptive to me in advance um, to my position and also receptive to what I was selling because I was selling. <laughs> okay. So this is, um, this is me actually on stage at um, James's event. And again, I'd been pre-framed and then the audience was in turn indoctrinated because they wanted to buy what I was selling. Now, had I gotten on that stage cold, had he done no previous marketing, had they not been reading favorable things about me, had he not positioned me along with the other celebrity speakers, and he's a great marker, knows exactly what he's doing, I wouldn't have been able to really sell as well as I did, right? But this is how the process works. So they were indoctrinated, which again was them taking the action I wanted them to take, which to buy what I was selling. And I was selling a product for $9.97, okay, $1,000 to all those people there, and I did quite well, okay, for a one hour talk. So that's an example of how the pre framing works to the indoctrination. So again, I was pre framed, to, <clears throat> excuse me, to being indoctrinated and getting the people to take the action that I wanted them to take at James' event. Um, that positive position about me that they had in advance helped me to sell because the seeds were planted. James planted the seeds. Okay, so that's how this process works and why that content, why the pictures I was showing you and it's taking the time to explain to you how I use them and why I use them and showing you the attachment and how people draw conclusions about you based on, you know, affiliation, different things like that. Okay, um, so indoctrination is kind of where a lot of people mess up. People try to sell folks too quickly when in reality, you know, you got to woo them. Like, you know, when somebody's trying to put their best foot forward on a date, you know, you can't just like go all in like that. Um, but we live in a world where instant gratification is like, it's like now or never. Like, I've been in the game so long. I remember marketing, like on using the radio, like all the social media wasn't even around. So we were like hardcore marketers using direct mail, sending stuff out in the mail, postcard stuff. But now people who missed that error when Facebook and Instagram and stuff came around, it, people really believe, that's why you saw, it seemed like all of a sudden everybody wanted to be an entrepreneur. I blame social media <laughs> because it made it seem so easy. Like, you mean I can create a free page on Facebook, a free thing on this other platform called Instagram. I can use Twitter. I can just put up a business page and 
now I'm an entrepreneur too. And I can post pictures and stuff and I'm an entrepreneur too. And everyone really believed that that was going to be enough to have a lucrative business. And you know, and I know, and if you've even tried it, you know it takes much more than that. This process is not going away just because social media is out there. Social media is just another platform or media for you to sell your stuff. Just like if you were to do a strategy call or you were to do a radio ad or you were to be on TV trying to sell. It's just another media, but all the principles and all the things that you need to do as far as credibility and everything else still have to be in place because a buying decision is a psychological one, right? And a person has to come to the conclusion that they want to spend money with you. And there's things that you have to do to make them feel comfortable spending money, to make them feel like they trust you, to make them feel like your, your product is gonna be good for them because they're trying to be sold by everybody and you see so many things that look good and no one knows where to put their money and they're afraid of being scammed and what if it doesn't work and you got to fight through all of that right so it doesn't matter the instant gratification it's just you know you got to woo people so this instant gratification thing that a lot of the newer entrepreneurs have um is not reality it's just not reality so you still you can't skip the process of um you know taking time to indoctrinate people so how it impacts your brand. Pre-framing to indoctrination is powerful when it's done right. I mean, imagine, just imagine a person already wanting to do business with you in advance of interacting with you, okay? Just already in advance, like showing up like, you know what? I've read so much about you. I've seen so much stuff. I heard you on this podcast. I saw you on TV. I got your book. I did this. And where do I sign? Here's my credit card. I am ready to work with you. I've gotten that before. Doesn't happen all the time, but... I've gotten that before because I had the content out there to make a person feel comfortable. That's a great place to be. And that's what I want you to have, a type of brand and the things in place to support your brand that make that possible for you. Okay, so this increases your demand, um, gives you more perceived value in your market, and it just helps you establish that lucrative brand because I want your brand to be lucrative. Like, remember we talked about the different definitions of branding? If your brand, again, I'm gonna keep saying it, if it's not attracting opportunity to you, if it's not allowing you to charge top dollar and charge your worth, then we have to work on the brand, okay? Because these are the things that make that possible, okay? So this is, um, gives you the ability to do that. And that's because it's gonna be backed up and supported by content, right? So again, when people tell you, oh, just go charge your worth and raise your rates, for you to charge top dollar for your product or your service, whatever it is that you do, you have to justify it by having some things in place, okay? So it's easier said than done. So that's why I hate when people tell people to just raise their prices. And that's why everyone's so scared because they know in their mind, like I could never charge this. I could never charge this much because they know they don't really have anything out there that would justify it even if you even if you're worth it even when you're worth it and you should be paid that much you kind of know you don't have anything out there that would lead anyone to the conclusion that they should pay you that much so you have to get the content you got to do the pre-framing and the indoctrination to make it ha happen okay so <clears throat> excuse me this is another example that i got so this is 2016 that i got check my mail my email and i got a uh email from Think Factory Media, which is responsible, which is a um, production company for a lot of the um, major reality shows out there and TV shows. And the, I just got this email out the blue one day, um, casting producer with Think Factory Media, working on a new show with Patty Stanger, AKA the Millionaire Matchmaker. We all know who she is. My casting director gave me a list of successful people that I should reach out for this show and you're one of them. And after I've done some research, I'm convinced you have a great look for TV and you're super successful. So if you're single, this show will be perfect for you. Yada, yada, yada. Now, I don't know these people. I know who they are. Of course, I know who Patty Stanger is. We all know who Million, Millionaire Matchmaker the show is. And a lot of us know Think Factory Media is you know, responsible for a lot of the um, TV shows, production company. But I don't know these people personally. How, how did they find me? How did I end up on this casting director's list of successful people? And how did they do research after getting my name and actually become convinced after seeing what? My content out there. So you see how the brand attracts opportunity? Okay. Now the sad part is I've been married forever. So I wasn't single. <laughs> I'm sure like, hopefully you're single. Oh, I'm not. Husband messed that up. I could have been a millionaire matchmaker, <laughs> but I was married. But I, again, I saw the marketing opportunity to share with my clients to help them about a brand. Like, I don't know these people. If they're researching me and I'm winding up on lists as people to come on these shows and I've been approached for more than one reality show. So this isn't the only one. Um, 
it's the brand again. It's the content. It's the pre-framing. It's the stuff that I strategically put out there to support my expert authority celebrity brand. And these are the little things and, and things that come your way to make you understand and help you understand that your brand is actually working for you. It's attracting the opportunity. It's allowing you to charge more and people are viewing you in a certain light. And the, this is what, these are the opportunities I want to happen to you. Like, like not necessarily being on a reality show, of course, or a TV show, but having people take a look around and be like, ooh, yes, I need him or her because they see what's out there in the world about you and your brand. And it's giving off the thing that you wanted to give. It's strategically done, right? So that's how you know it's working. So that's why I love to share this. Okay, so indoctrination materials and conversion, okay. Indoctrination conversion are everything from the time a person opts into your website or landing page to after they actually bought from you, right? And then your ongoing relationship with them. That's the conversion part. But indoctrination materials are what they have seen after they've been pre-framed. And the goal of the material, of course, is to build trust so you can convert them. So after they've seen all your stuff out there, that's the pre-framing, and they haven't met you, but they're seeing you everywhere and all this and all that, now they're ready to opt in. And maybe when they opt in, you have a video or something for them, and they can convert. So indoctrination materials, you know, you're pre-framed, you established yourself as an expert in advance by them seeing the stuff out there about you. Now you want to get them indoctrinated using your launch videos, your webinars, your downloadable PDFs, your, your teleseminars, if you still do those, whatever it is, you want to get people indoctrinated, right, to see your materials. So an example would be if you created a video um, that positions you as an expert without even selling them anything. Remember, it's not always about the quick got to sell, got to sell, got to sell. You got to build the, the goodwill. So the sole purpose, sole purpose of the indoctrination materials is to get people to opt in and give them great value and content and help establish your position and, and establish goodwill between you and the, the prospect, right? Um, and goodwill makes the conversion process easy. Remember, you're not selling at this point with your indoctrination material, just giving value, right? And the goodwill helps to make the conversion process easier when you do get to the point that you have something you want to offer to them. It's not just a cold sell out the blue. They've been you know, hanging around and checking out your stuff and getting great value from you for a while. So now when you do offer some stuff, they're easy to convert. Um, I, I run ads on Facebook for my cosmetic line, right? And so I can't just run ads saying buy my makeup on Facebook because people, a lot of people haven't heard of um, SWL Cosmetics Collection yet, right? So what I do is I create a branding video where I talk about the makeup, who my makeup line is for, what we stand for, and I did the same whole process um, with my makeup company. It was took a while for me to do it, trying to figure out how I'm going to position my makeup company different from other uh, women who have lines, but I came up with what my thing was, my position was going to be for my makeup line, and I talk about it in a video, and I just run that video for brand awareness, right? So people, it's going around to my market, you know, who I'm targeting, and people are seeing it, and they're like, oh, oh, that's her makeup line, that's what she's doing. But then they'll start to see other ads for the actual makeup, where they can buy something. So then it's not when they see the other ads, they're not like, who is this? They're like, oh, that's that girl's video that I watched about her makeup line, who, you know, this is who it's for, and da, da, da. They've seen stuff about me where I wasn't selling them. So I'm indoctrinating people even with my Facebook advertising. So I'm using this process on every platform that I can. So everything I'm teaching you today, these couple of concepts, and it may seem like a lot, but I'm still just on like two things, right? Um, <laughs> I'm using it in everyday life, even with my makeup company, I'm still doing the branding and indoctrinating and getting them, know, getting them to understand who SWL is for, okay? We're gonna remain a classic in a world full of trends. That's very, very important to me. And then there's conversion. Okay, the process, of course, a customer goes through when they invest with you, they pay for your services or your product. And, you know, when you make your sale, you want to make the sale while maintaining good position and goodwill and everything. You want everything to be great. And so the best way to make more money in your business is by improving your position all the time, pre-framing and indoctrination. And I know um, a lot of people are always trying to create new products and more products and tweak the product to make it better. When we think about making more money, we're, we, there's a lot of places, a lot of things you can do to make more money in your business. But one of the easiest ways is by putting out more and more content that improves your position. 
that pre-frames and indoctrinates people because then the selling part becomes easier. So less time trying to tweak the product or service, which is probably already fabulous. And I'm all for improvement, but a lot of you just keep going there because it's all you know how to do. And you think that that's the thing that's gonna make you more money. You keep trying to figure out other ways to do it. And you can, there are some other ways, but this is one of the easiest and best ways to do it. So keep improving the position, pre-framing and indoctrination, okay? Email indoctrination is another one, um, right? So let's say I write, you know, someone decides to get indoctrinated. They've been seeing my stuff out there. Now they want to opt into my list. And I start writing emails to my prospects and I'm not selling anything. I'm just giving out value and content and tips that they could like really go and use in their, in their, in their business right now and make money or whatever. So I tell the story of how I left my nine to five job and I created my own business and I juggled both before I could replace my income and sustain myself. This is all a true story, right? And so let's say I'm emailing this out to my list and I'm using the story to inspire and motivate people on how I was able to successfully do it so they could see how I did and everything. So a well-written email that inspires is, is indoctrinating a person to you. You're not selling them anything, but you're sharing a story with them that they can relate to. And it's, it's, it's establishing goodwill and they're feeling my vibe and they're feeling a connection connection to me without knowing me. Um, and I'm establishing trust, which is needed when you're buying, especially when you're buying, um, when you want people to buy higher priced products, which I want you to have high priced products and services because it's the best position. Okay, so when I am ready to sell them, right, when I am ready to sell them, they're actually um, going to buy and convert, right? So here are a couple of things I just want you to evaluate for your brand, okay, because we're wrapping up here. I want you to figure out what position in your market you currently have. Like taking everything I just talked about, what is your position in the market? Could you, can you identify it, right? What do you stand for and what do you stand against, if anything, okay? So write that down. I want you to say, well, what is my position in market, okay? What is my current position in market? If you have one, you may say, you know what, I don't even have one. That's fine too, because this is all about figuring out where you're at right now so you know what to do going forward. And what do you stand for and against? And again, if, you, if you're like, I don't even know. Like, I don't know, I'm all over the place. That's good too, because you can fix it, it's cool. So do you have anything in place to pre-frame prospects? This goes back to the content, all those pictures and the things that I showed you, how I use it different ways, all the celebrity this and doing that, which supports my, the position I've taken with my brand, expert authority, all that. What content do you have working for you that you can do the same thing with, that you can put out there to plant seeds in advance of anyone ever interacting with you? What can you put out to the universe so that you know somebody can come to you with a great opportunity, like the millionaire matchmaker thing? What's out there when people look around and they see, right? To make them come to that conclusion. Um, how can you indoctrinate people? What can you create in your business to draw people towards you um, once they will opt in, make them wanna opt in? And what indoctrination materials do you already have, right? Not selling, just giving value and, and building the goodwill and the trust and the credibility and then feeling like, oh my God, this stuff is so good. This stuff is so good. This stuff is so good. I'm not even paying for it. So that when you do make an offer, they're like, oh my God, I got so much value from her free stuff and her emails and her video training. I am buying this. If I was able to do X, Y, Z, just offer free stuff, imagine if I bought this course or this product or, or I decided to work with him or her. I keep saying her, so sorry guys. I'm just used to working with women entrepreneurs, but no offense. All right, so those are the two, just a couple of things I want you to evaluate for your brand because I think they're the most important things in helping you to monetize a brand and have a good one, all right? So get these three things together, okay? Um, there's a lot of info going around about brands, but if you focus on a strong position in your market and you only focus on the people who are attracted to that position, you will do great. Remember I said it's okay to, to be against somebody, another position or somebody else, especially when you feel strongly about it. How I feel about purpose and passion is nothing that I just made up. I've worked with enough women to know that it has wasted so much of their time and money that it irks me. It genuinely irks me. So I'm passionate about it, right? Oh, I said the word passion. I'm passionate about purpose and passion not being the only thing that they focus on. So that position is authentic to me. It's a strong position I have. It, it separates me from what a lot of other business coaches are doing because they do say they're teaching business. And you know, all you need to do is I'm going to help you find your purpose and passion and you're going to be able to profit. And that's not me. Okay, and I want you to, to figure out what can be your thing that you're against. I have no problem being against that. Okay, um, if you focus on pre framing and indoctrinating prospects with content, right, rather than, like I said, constantly just trying to tweak your products and services and improve, or maybe I need another certification, or maybe I need this, or maybe I need a new product, or more colors, or more whatever. No, 
focused on doing more of the pre-framing and indoctrinating, okay? Because a correctly positioned brand um, commands top dollar, and these are the things that help support and justify it. Because remember, I said it's not as simple as just raising your prices and people telling you to charge your worth, charge your worth. You should, but you got to have things in place to make people actually buy into those higher price points, okay? So... I hope that was fantabulous for you, okay? I had a great time talking about this stuff. Um, and like I said, I, I could probably do it. I said two, I could probably do a three day seminar on how to, you know, do all this stuff. There's more to it, but these couple of things, again, it's important to me that you um, think differently about the brand you currently have, or if you're getting ready to create one, because this can save you so much and help you create something really fabulous that you become known for and it's crystal clear. And that's what I really wanted you to take away today. So I know I told you that I would give you my free seven day business and branding bootcamp. Um, and all you have to do is go to vickiurbanbrandingbootcamp.com. You see the URL right there. And that's actually my book, the um, Brand Building Blueprint. And, and what I did with the seven day training is I, I taught a lot of what's in the book as well. Um, and it's more examples of how I built my brand, what worked, what didn't work. And I also gave you some great examples in this training of um, brands that really stand out in how they did the position taking and how it really worked. One of the things I talk about is Planet Fitness. Remember Planet Fitness first came out? I was like, how is it going to work where we're supposed to be about health and fitness and now they're offering people pizza parties and there's candy there and they don't want anyone to be hardcore. They don't want any lunkheads. And if you throw the weights around and you carry a water jug, that's a bad thing. Like that goes against everything we know about fitness. And we know by who would think that that would work to create a gym that fosters and creates a culture where this is okay. Who would think that that would work? And so I dive into stuff like that because Planet Fitness worked when no one would think it could. But what did they do? They took the opposite position. That doesn't make sense to people. There's probably so many people who tell them that that wouldn't work, but they didn't do what every other gym does. They took a different unique position and it's attracting the people who are intimidated by the hardcore gyms and stuff like that, right? So that's the type of stuff I talk about in the seven day training. So I made it when you go to that URL that um, when you opt in for the training, there's some other stuff on there that you won't be able to get. <laughs> but the training, if you opt in for the Vicky Urban Branding Bootcamp, you're able to get that right away. And it's every day for seven days, I drop a video on um, concepts in the book. And again, this is a training that took me an entire day to record. So it's pretty robust for seven days. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a healthy free gift that I'm giving you. You'll learn a lot. And um, I think you really like it. So that, that is what I had to offer you today. I hope you enjoyed the training. I had a good time talking to everybody. Um, this has been super cool. Um, and just like I said, if you just get those couple of concepts together, um, you will be like light years ahead of everybody and you'll, you'll start to see how you can build and more and more content. You don't have to create all the content by yourself. You can hire somebody um, very cost effectively to help you, you know, but it's, it's content is always going to be king when it comes to making more money in your business and helping you position your brand. So I hope I helped clear up a lot of the confusion about what a brand is and is not and got you to focus on the things that help monetize your brand because again you know i'm all about the money okay i'm not all about the cute taglines and catchy names and i'm the you know i'm the this person i'm the that person i'm the the lady this and the lady that and the so-and-so coach and the this is that i'm not that that name alone could be cute it could be so cute but if the stuff is not in place to uh support it you're not going to be able to monetize the brand and so i just want you to come up with a cute name all you want i just want you to have the stuff in place to make it work for you all right so again i hope you enjoyed this um i had a great time teaching and again i want to thank um shay for allowing me to be one of the master facilitators for this awesome 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 summit on how to be prepared for a comeback um, after there's a setback and again I'm, I'm a huge proponent always arm yourself with income generating skills so that when catastrophe hits whether it's personal pandemic um, governmental inter interference could shut something down in your business that you know was really making you money before that you no longer can do by law there's so many different um, setbacks you're going to have as an entrepreneur they're inevitable and so the way that you you run your business smartly is that you buckle down and you learn the things that allow you to rebuild again and Shay has done a phenomenal job by bringing together um, professionals 
who've had some success doing the things that they're talking about in all different arenas that you can take some from here and some from here and some from here and start learning these things and, 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 and bulletproof your business and, and really help yourself to survive when that um, setback comes because it's going to come. It's just life, you know, we have to be prepared, all right? So if you've ever seen people who you've seen lost everything, but they were able to rebuild, it's because they, they have these um, the specialized knowledge to do it. A lot of people, when they lose everything, they don't know how to rebuild because they don't have the specialized knowledge to do it. So once it's gone, it's gone. But anyone that you've ever seen lose everything and just keeps coming back and building in different industries and different things, they have all these marketing concepts and different things down where they know how to do it no matter what industry they go in and out of. All right. So that's what I want for you. So again, thank you very much. I hope you go get the branding boot camp, seven day training. I had a good time. Thanks for listening. All right. Talk. See you.